I wanna know which one is better, a roof mount for solar panels or a ground mount for solar panels. So I installed 26 on a ground mount that is season adjustable, meaning I can change the angle that these panels sit at. It won't turn left and right, but it will tilt up and down. And then I also installed 26 solar panels on my roof. So I have four groups of 13 panels. So that's a 13S 4P configuration. And in order to make sure that this is a completely fair assessment between roof versus ground mount, I've connected each one of these groups to their own dedicated solar generator so we can see live which ones are doing the best. Now you can see right now that there is no shading on the roof and that's from both sides of the roof. There is no tree shading at all. And that's the same with the ground mount as well. There are no shade issues at all. So we're gonna go over the pros and cons of each after we look at how much power they're each making right now. But I wanna go over specifically which one I would choose if I had to do this again. So obviously the first thing to look at is how much power each one is making. So I have 13 panels connected to each one of these Apollo solar generators. Now this whole setup is the diamond kit with more solar panels even than what's in the diamond kit. I maxed it out as much as I could in order to increase my chances of getting to the next sunny day. The lifeblood of solar generators is solar input, go figure. So I have units one, two, three, four, and I have this set up as a roof mount, ground mount, roof mount, ground mount. So the ground mount on unit number one, we are pulling in currently 3557. You can see there's the total wattage, volts, and amps. On unit number two, which is a roof mount, we're pulling in 3063 volts and amps. Unit three, 3800 watts basically, and then unit number four, 3252. So here's what I can tell. I can tell that the roof mount is making on average close to 900 watts less right now. That's an 1800 watt difference of power production right now. So as I do the math on this, I'm basically getting a 25% boost on the ground mount and these solar panels are not bifacial. I normally recommend bifacial solar panels because that's a solar panel where it has cells on the back as well as the front. It doesn't do much if it's a roof mounted system, but if it's on a ground mount, all the ambient light that hits the back of the panels helps to increase the solar input. So there is no play of bifacial gain in this test. So right off the bat, at least in the winter, we can tell that we're getting more power production off of a ground mount. Now that should be pretty obvious because in the winter, the sun sits lower in the sky because we're in the Northern Hemisphere. And that reduces the amount of solar peak hours that we have every day. So most people fall into one of two camps. They either use the majority of their energy during the winter because they're in a cold climate and they're running lots of space heaters, or they use the majority of their energy in the summer because they live in a hot climate and so they're running their air conditioning constantly during the summer. I've had my panels up since later this summer and I definitely was still getting about a 10% gain out of my ground mount over my roof mount. So the first con for the roof mount is that it doesn't make as much power compared to a ground mount, which automatically makes the pro for a ground mount that you can make more power, especially during the winter when you have the least amount of sun to make power. All around, ground mount wins this 100% hands down in terms of power production. Now in terms of a roof mount, one of the other issues that I have found with this is that it will retain a lot more dirt than my ground mount. And that's simply because they're not as steep of a tilt. So that would maybe be different if I had a steeper pitched roof. But generally speaking, it's pretty common for dirt, bird poop, twigs, leaves, all of that stuff to get stuck on the panels. I can even see some bird droppings up on these panels right now. If I wanted to increase the efficiency of these panels, it would be a good idea for me to clean them. And the best way to do it is without any detergents, just use distilled water. If you are gonna use your hose water, that's fine, but you need to make sure that as you clean it, you clean off the water using a squeegee so that way none of the minerals get stuck on the face. Now that can be a little problematic since it's up on the roof. Now, my roof isn't very tall, but especially if you have a two-story roof, you might wanna look at hiring someone to do that for you, but then that's gonna start playing into the cost of the whole system and how much it's gonna cost over your lifetime and reduce your return on investment. But at the same time, if they don't get cleaned, then they don't make as much power, reducing your return on investment. With my ground mount, I've actually already cleaned it this season and I just used my hose water. I made sure to use a squeegee. So I basically did the top row, gave it a good scrub with the hose water and then squeegeed it off right as soon as I was done to make sure none of the hard minerals in my water got stuck on the glass. The rain does not clean off solar panels. Just the same way that your car doesn't get cleaned in the rain, your solar panels also don't get cleaned in the rain. So I can see along the bottom edge of these panels that they've already collected more dirt 
and I'm gonna have to go ahead and clean those off in the future, but it's much easier to do on a ground mount because all I need is a ladder that's only a few feet tall, and then with an extending cleaning brush, I can get all the tops and bottoms. Now, I purposely left this gap in between my top and bottom row because I'm in a snowy environment. Here in Idaho, we get a good amount of snow every year, and so I wanted the snow to be able to slough off from the top row and fall down rather than going on to the bottom row. That should reduce how much time it takes for the panels to clean the snow off of themselves each day. So that should increase my return on investment on how much power they make per day. Now it's already about noon and we can see that these solar panels on the roof still have lots of snow on them. They are not making any power at all going into the Apollos. So I would have to climb up and get all of that snow off because they're not at a steep angle. So this may not be as big of a problem if your roof is south facing and is at a steep angle but the top row will usually have snow melt onto the bottom row, making it take longer to get those panels cleared off in snowy climates. Whereas the ground mount, all of the snow has mostly fallen off. This has not been swiped off. This is just 100% the snow falling off on its own. And we can see that the plan is working to where the snow from the top panels is falling off and not going on to the bottom panels. So this is another major advantage and a faster return on investment for a ground mount because it cleans itself off faster in terms of snow. And this will make a lot more power during the winter because of its tilt. Now to be perfectly clear, I've not been sponsored in any way, shape, or form. I bought this Sinclair ground mount all on my own. I paid for the concrete. I did all the work myself. Then I upgraded to these drill driver sockets right here. So I could just put my power drill right on these and adjust the angle. That's one of the things that makes this such a nice system is during the summer, I can flatten these out more because the sun is more up in the sky versus lower in the sky during the winter. But this ground mount costs more than twice as much as doing my roof mount, which is the next thing we need to talk about. Now the Sinclair ground mount in and of itself is really not that expensive. And if you're interested in getting one, you're welcome to shoot me an email to info at poweredportablesolar.com. I can get you discounts on this racking system. All in all, the racking itself was only like $2,500 to $3,000, but the shipping, the shipping was like $2,500. But if you're not picking it up yourself, it's going to be expensive shipping. Now, aside from the shipping were these concrete piers. These are six foot deep concrete piers. So we had to auger down using a big front loader and a two foot wide auger into the ground. Now you can probably see we've got a lot of rocks in our soil. This is actually an old riverbed here in southeast Idaho. So it's pretty common in this area for the first two to three feet to be nice dirt and then underneath that is huge round river rocks. So the big problem with that was as soon as the auger gets into that rock it can't stabilize itself and it starts rotating in different directions and makes a bell shape in the dirt. Well, that increases the concrete cost drastically. So it took two extra days of excavating these, basically digging down with the auger, getting the rocks out, and then putting in the sono tubes, filling with concrete, and then backfilling outside of the sono tube. So the hardest thing that I generally face when I do ground mounts is the soil. You just don't know what is six feet down, and these oftentimes have to go five to six feet in the ground. Now there is an alternative option that I've started doing where we do a surface mount that's called a ballast mount. And basically it looks like a huge box and we fill it with concrete and then we don't have to do anything in the dirt and that works really well. So if you're interested in that, just shoot me an email. I'll be happy to get you information on that. But between the concrete, equipment rental, labor for my guys, all of my equipment that I had to buy, this ground mount right here was around $10,000. One of the other things I had to do was trench all of the solar wire in the ground all the way over to my house. Now with the roof mount, this was only about $3,000 worth of equipment. And we had the whole system installed technically in like six hours. There was some racking that was missing from one side, so we had to order that. But putting up the racking and installing the panels took less than one full day. Whereas the ground mount took about four days total with putting up the panels, putting up bird proofing in the back of it, doing all the excavation, it was a lot more labor intensive. So by far, the roof mount is much more affordable and much faster and it definitely wins there. Now I wouldn't recommend a roof mount if you have enough space on your property to put a ground mount and if your roof is not south facing. If you don't have a south facing roof, a ground mount's what you wanna go for, for sure. If the panels go on east and west facing rooftops, they still make power 
but we're talking about a 50% reduction. You really are trying to maximize your time of the solar panels being exposed directly to the sun when it is coming through the least amount of atmosphere. So that's gonna be in the middle of the day. This video is not sponsored by anyone except for you guys. I want to thank my Patreon members. You can become a Patreon member by going to patreon.com slash Minuteman Prep. You can get direct access to me. I can answer your questions about solar or preparedness or whatever. But really, if I had to choose to do this all again, I would probably go with a ground mount because I can make the most amount of power, especially off-grid. If I have the option, a ground mount is my favorite in terms of power production, but a roof mount is my favorite in terms of speed and cost efficiency. Now you can get non-tilting ground mounts and I do like those as well. They're really easy to install. I've done a lot of those. And I generally recommend putting them at about a 45 degree angle. During the summer, it's not that hard to make power from solar panels. It's during the winter that you really need to maximize your solar production because there's more cloudy days and there's less sun hours per day. If you'd like to see a follow-up video of me testing this in the summer to see how they compare, then comment down below summer results and I'll make another video about this. Now, if you're looking for a full system that you can easily go off grid with just by pulling it out of the box, connecting it together and connecting it into your electrical panel, then click this video up here because I show you exactly how I did that and how I took my house off grid using solar generators. The whole key part of this is to have enough solar panels for my needs. And I recommend you do the same and then that's how you be prepared. Thanks guys, see you on the next video.